to others. Again, again another great musician who was our parish priest and principal of the school. He was from Pune, and he was there from the, right from the time I was nine years old. And I insisted that he should celebrate my marriage. Very, very important figure in my life. Professor Armand Mazur, who was my professor in my master's degree, and who was the principal when I started joining his teaching. Uh, uh, you know, all these, and later my closeness through Alban, to Jose Pereira and Eusebio Roberts, all these have enriched my perceptions of the best in world culture, its strengths and its weaknesses, such as caste. And that is why, because caste is such a weakness and something that we have to address and correct, I have quoted that wonderful story to Konawa in my album. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kuto. Uh, we have heard as about aspects of Professor Lucio's life that I think none of us was really aware of. And we've also heard about Dr. Kuto's uh, small secrets that we were not aware of. <laughs> I will now request my friend Ramola to share her experiences of being a student in the very first batch of students of Dente College where Professor Lucio Rodriguez later became the head of the English department. Ramola? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It makes me really proud uh, to be here today to pay my respects to Professor Lucio Rodriguez on his 100th birth anniversary. And I must thank Frederick Nerona and the HCHR uh, for, for uh, inviting me for this program, giving me this on the opportunity to be here. Uh, a program that I might not have been able to attend because I uh, now shifted to Shishini and uh, it would have been difficult if I hadn't got this incentive. Um, Shiko's Mando brought back uh, the memories of uh, Professor Lucio. In fact, many of you feel that uh, he was here. And uh, the moment I was asked to give this talk, I, and you know, so many memories kept coming back to me that I said, no, I've got to sit down and uh, write it. That's why the notes, to make sure that I keep to my uh, time. Next year will make it 50 years since I passed the BA in English Literature. But I was blessed with two professors whose inspiration will last me all my life. One of these, of course, was Professor Lucio. The other is still a very prominent figure and is right here in our midst, Dr. Aurora Kuto. And she is still every bit as charming and as graceful as she was in those days, very long before when she taught us at the B. Uh, Professor Lucio joined the college just before I uh, got into the junior BA at, uh, in 1964. And I still remember how comfortable he used to be in the classroom, you know, just walking around among the students, even in the big compulsory classes, and suddenly he would sit on a student's desk and talk to us uh, from um, there. But it was in our English honors class, uh, classes that uh, he really came uh, at life. I mean, he brought whatever he taught to life. Those are the most memorable uh, moments for me. Uh, one subject, for instance, prosody, is um, an analysis of poetry. You know, you analyze the meter and rhythm of uh, poetry. And it has often been uh, condemned as being a dissection of poetry. But in Professor Lucio's hands, it was an aid to appreciation. And uh, 
it was it was uh, like uh, music to together with music as a deep time to i am my trophy and anarchist and that to uh, so much so that you know after he uh, passed away it became my subject it was so much a part of me and no one else wanted to take it over <laughs> to take it over In, uh, in this connection, one uh, incident comes to my mind. A student who had not attended classes for a long time, and he came to me one day and said, I can't manage to revise prosody. Please tell me what it's all about. I said, OK, I sat with him for some time. And then he, uh, at the end of it, he said, wow, this is like music. And I said to myself, God bless you, Professor Lucio. I remember it at that time. At the MA level, uh, he taught us American literature and he captured the 19th century poets, uh, poet Whitman's ringing tones, Emily Dickinson's much gentler aphorisms, uh, so well that we could never forget them. And then he taught us uh, a novel by Reiser, Sister Carrie. I, I don't think I would have read this novel if it was not a text because somehow naturalism doesn't appeal to me at all. But his teaching was so forceful that um, I even read other novels of writers. Now, Professor Prakrasad was a very small class. We were just six girls and uh, one boy. And uh, he had his own way of teasing each one of us, he knew how to get at us. And for me it was, Rizomora, you've got no roots, he would say. And I would tell him, how could I have any? But my father was in the army and we'd be transferred every few years, sometimes. definitely never more than three years we were in one place, you know. So we'd kept, keep getting transferred. He said, how could I have roots? Let him all sell everything. Wherever we went, we had to learn a new state language, right from Marathi to Bengali, because we went up towards the northeast. And uh, uh, most of all, I hated the tuitions that were a necessity if I were to pass uh, the exams. This has created such an aversion for Indian languages that I had difficulty picking up company. And, and this was his main grasp. His love for Konkani went so deep that he wanted to instill it into me. And it was a difficult task at the time. But Professor Bushu, wherever you are now, I want you to know that my Konkani may be a mixture, it's a mixture of the different dialects that I picked up along the way. But I have sent my roots down so deep into Goan soil that even my children refuse to leave Goa. And they have chosen wives who think exactly the same way as they do. Um, so for all these are mental key tricks that I have to do, but I also have some tangible ones. When I was uh, doing my BA, I joined Scanodec and uh, to learn shorthand and typing. And I had hardly uh, begun you know, typing when we uh, learned about it. And he got over for me and says, come on, you're, you're learning typing. He says, uh, how about typing some notes? And he gave me, he gave me a book and said, type the note. You can keep one copy for yourself and give me one. And I grabbed the idea. And this was just one of many books. And I still have those notes, some of those notes, not all of them, but I have some of those precious notes with me from sources which I myself I might never have been able to access because the books came from some Bombay University, British Council, American Center. I remember one or two from a college also, must have been through friends of uh, his. Then uh, uh, he was my colleague, as I mentioned. He was my colleague also for uh, 
for some time. First, when I completed my BA in 1966, uh, I was a fellow of the department. Uh, what stands out most in, uh, in this period, in my memory of this period, is his kindness. He could have, he could have bullied me, he could have dumped uh, work on me, but he didn't want to, uh, want to take up or that he couldn't get anyone else. He could have um, dumped me with corrections, but he was always so fair-minded and uh, so encouraging. He actually gave me classes to take uh, when I was uh, still studying for my MA. And uh, this, I think, you know, was uh, the boost that I needed, the encouragement that I needed. And I was so shy, so diffident at the time. In fact, I remember how he told me, talk louder, you must learn to shout. And in those days, some of our compulsory classes had over 100 students. So I did learn to shout. So that now, I think most of the time I'm talking almost chapter. Of course, a few corrections did come, but they were so few and far between. They were also part of my uh, training. This was Professor Lucio Rodriguez. This was the professor that I will always be grateful to. I will always look on with deep affection. Even when I uh, completed my MA and joined as a lecturer in the department, I still felt that same kindness and consideration that was very much a part of it. His sudden death in 1973 was came as a real shock to the and irreparable loss. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ramona. I know that Professor Lucio was very fond of his students. For instance, there was Diego Silveira, who went on to get a first class, and those days to get a first class was extremely rare. And uh, Professor Lucio was really, really fond of him, as he was of Ramona. And talking of kindness, whose kindness rubbed on to whom, I would not say, Ramona. I have a suspicion that you gave as much as you received. May I now request my friend, Professor Rabin Pichu, to add his own reflections of Professor Rodriguez as a colleague in the Department of English at Bendy College. Respected members of the panel on the days here, Frederick Yorana, who phoned me some three weeks back while I was in Porgori. It was fortunate that I knew him earlier in Dempe College. I was introduced to him, but he forgot my features and I forgot him. <laughs> so over the phone he asked me, we are celebrating the birth centenary of Professor Lucio. Would you be kind enough to be one of the speakers? I was telling my colleague who is in the audience, I was non class. How do I keep Frederick waiting over the phone without either saying yes or no? Silence over the phone is very oppressive. So quickly I said, yes, I will. But I told him, I will be very brief because my association with Professor Lucio was equally brief. It said, speak from the heart. 
I like that line. To speak from the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, two illustrious speakers have already spoken before me. I stand with a distinct disadvantage because I was neither his colleague for a long time nor was I student like how Ramona was. What can I say of a man whom I knew hardly for a year? I, along with my respected colleague, Ms. Vaz, joined Delta College in June 1972. And you all know that Professor Lucio passed away August 1972. Being such an illustrious professor, he hardly spent much time in Delphi College because he was associated elsewhere in so many other things. It was my loss. All that I remember is immaculately dressed men used to enter in the staff room in the morning, take his lecture, wish us good morning, and being so busy, he would leave. It made me wonder where he was going. So I quickly ran to the window to see. I don't know if he's a girl who collects this. By the time he finished his lecture, a big black car, a posh black car used to be there outside Delphi College, waiting to pick him up. I made inquiries, where is Professor Lucio going? He said he's going to Kaab Rajnivas, then giving some coaching to the son of the then governor. I don't even remember in 1972 who was the governor at that time of Goa. But it's a fact, absolute fact, that he used to go every day for the coaching to his son. And then of course since he was so busy, and then the college had three sessions. The morning session, the afternoon session, and the night. Then the college was the only college that had night classes. And Miss Waz and myself, being juniors, were fortunate or oh, unfortunate to reach all three sections. I wonder what I ate for lunch at that time. When the morning session got over at 30, and the afternoon started and the night. Why do I say all this is? Because I we didn't have the gift. Oh, I didn't have the gift of having Professor Lucio with me in the afternoon or having Professor Lucio at night. I didn't have it. So short a stint it was. And yet, if one is to create an impression on someone, essentially is not affected. Today I am going to tell the reason why I agree to speak to Frederick. The reason is going to come out now. I entered Delphi College as a Cairo at the age of 24. Professor Lucio was so much older than I entered the portals of Delphi College with so much of trepidation in my heart. During my student days, I never took part in any question of this or any debate. I never took a platform when I spoke in the public. What sort of a teacher would I be? All these thoughts ate me. And I said to myself, my gosh, what is this head of the department, Professor Lucio Lord, is going to make out of me? Really, I had a fear in my heart that my stay in Delphi College would be as brief 
as I thought it would be. But ladies and gentlemen, 36 long years along with this was, I continued there. I retired there after 36 long years of service. I must admit publicly here today, it would not have been possible if it was not for pop up service. What magic did he work then? I'm going to reveal what magic he worked. Let me quote the words of Maya Angelou, the American novelist and poet, Maya Angelou, who died very recently. She said, People will forget what you said. They will even forget what you did. But they will never ever forget how you made them feel. Professor Lucio made me feel as a member of his family. In 1972, a raw person entering there, he took me to his heart, and so also is Isabel. But he knew her as a student, but me not as a stranger. Ramula said very briefly, he could, give, he could have given a tough test which was difficult for him to handle, and that would be the end of it. Speaking of talking, pushed my ego. I became comfortable in his presence. Ladies and gentlemen, he welcomed me with warmth, he welcomed me with love, he welcomed me with affection. As if I was his erstwhile colleague of years, he knew I knew how to handle people. That was a gift that he had. People will never, ever forget how you made them feel, Maya Angelou. I haven't forgotten 43 years there. 